So in the last uh, mini lecture, I gave you a background on the water budget equation. And I referenced that it can be used to um, look at water availability um, based on different forest management scenarios. So we can think about how water forest management, um, in fact, influences stream flow or water yield. And so that's what I'm going to uh, discuss here in this lecture. So forest management practices such as forest harvesting and site conversion, which is changing from one vegetation type to another, can impact um, hydrologic processes in a watershed, both over the short term and sometimes the long term. Um, and the water budget equation can be used to predict these changes. So let's look at that water budget equation and remember that um, stream uh, soil moisture and groundwater can be negligible over long periods of time. Um, and here we have stream flow, we have precipitation, evapotranspiration, and S is soil moisture and, and um, GW is groundwater. So um, again, this changes in soil moisture and groundwater um, are factors over the short term, but over the long term, um, as I said in the last lecture, over the water year, they can become negligible. So then that means that um, stream flow is really influenced by the changes in evapotranspiration that occur when a forest harvest um, is, is done. Um, because we'll be looking at that um, water budget equation in terms of precipitation, which isn't something that you can control versus evapotranspiration, which comes from plants and the soil evaporating. And of course, the solar radiation hitting the soil surface. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Long-term studies have been done to assess this influence on the water budget equation and these hydrologic processes. Um, the forest management practices are going to influence these things. So the most significant studies have been done on what we call paired watersheds. And that's something that you're going to um, need to understand when you're looking at these final questions. So mainly it's the influence of these forest management practices on those hydrologic processes that are expressed in that water budget equation. And looking at these paired watersheds. So a paired watershed study involves examining two watersheds that are going to be similar in size and location and other characteristics. So that's um, expressed here, these two watersheds, perhaps they're side by side, separated by a ridge line. And because they're paired, we can use them um, for studies, although there's probably some differences. But um, to conduct these studies, um, one watershed is what we call the control and will be left untouched. And that might be this watershed here where it says control watershed. And then you have a treatment watershed and that watershed has been modified in some way, either um, some type of timber harvesting, either a thinning, which means not taking all the trees, leaving some a clear cut or some kind of vegetation or land use conversion. Um, for example, ch changing from forest to agriculture or just changing the vegetation type from hardwood to conifers. And the results of these studies um, show how different pr management practices can influence these hydrologic processes, the evapotranspiration and therefore the stream flow, the uh, soil moisture and groundwater, which over the long term um, aren't really considered and they're difficult, of course, to measure. So this graph here is an example of um, what happens, uh, what kind of changes you see in the watershed um, after a clear cut. So this white area here is before the clear cut and then this um, colored area or gray area here is after the clear cut. And um, the solid line um, that you see on this graph represents um, the control watershed and this broken line is the treatment watershed. Now they're overlapping lines here for precipitation because of course precipitation is going to be the same for each watershed. 
But then you look at stream flow, and of course, stream flow is the same for each watershed until this point where um, harvesting has occurred. And I believe this is 100% harvest, so it's a clear cut. And you can see that, um, and these, is, these are years, so this happened in 1965, and this is over a two-year period to 1967, actually 19, three years to 1968. Um, you can see that stream flow increased significantly over that first year and then started going back to its normal flow, sort of, um, after three years. And the control did not um, change. Its, its stream flow was about the same um, compared to the treatment watershed. And then evapotranspiration... Um, remained relatively high for the uh, control watershed, but decreased significantly for the um, treated watershed. And that is all related to this, uh, sorry, the, the water budget equation, because if you look at that, um, you'll see the precipitation stayed the same, but our stream flows changed significantly when evapotranspiration went way down here. So as evapotranspiration went down, stream flow went up. And then as after a year's time when um, vegetation started growing back, um, you're going to start seeing a change in that stream flow. The stream flow is going back down and then um, evapotranspiration uh, decrease again, and that may be a factor um, depending on what kind of vegetation grew back there that um, perhaps um, it was a type of species that uh, transpired more than the original uh, vegetation. So those are the kinds of things to consider um, in the questions I'm going to be asking you because on the final, you're going to be ans answering questions about a paired watershed study and how forest management can influence these hydrologic processes in a watershed. Um, you'll also be describing the different hydrologic processes and the connections between those processes as part of the final. Um, I think it's a good summary of what you've learned in the class because mainly we've done these hydrologic processes and along with the water project, um, I think I'll get a good assessment of what you have learned. So take care and I hopefully 